they change their position. When they find themselves in a position of difficulty, they change it and move to a position of better strength and of confidence from which they can change their situation. And so the Muslims heard this idea, the Prophet heard this idea, and he said, let's do it. Let's run with it. Let's make it happen, right? Now, if you were a pessimist, you would say, are you crazy? We've never done this before. This is the desert. You can't build a moat in the desert. You can't build a trench in the desert. This is sand. Or you would have said, they could just jump over it. This is not going to work. You know, this isn't worth my time. Or, and vice versa, if you're an optimist, you would have said, well, this isn't needed. We have a law on our side, if you're a blind optimist. We have a law on our side. Let's just rush out to that field and see what happens. And if Allah's truly on our side, he'll, he'll make us victorious. You can't do either of these things. You have to walk that middle path. And so each and every person in the Muslim community got to work. From the oldest of the old to the youngest of the young who was able to carry a stone. I mean, imagine this. Imagine each and every one of us today. We have a great spectrum of ages in this room. Imagine our children helping picking up little pebbles, right? Where, where the strongest, most strongest bodied would help pick up the strongest. And those who are a little more elderly would help pick up the little ones and do what they could. Everybody in the community joined together to build this trench. Because they said, yes, we believe we can win, but it's not just about belief, it's about action as well. And we know they built this trench. It was, it was one of the most, it, it, was, it was a man-made defense on three sides, exposed on one. It forced the Meccan army to funnel in. And this tactic was a brilliant tactic that even today historians, Muslim and non-Muslim, discuss as military, military genius, but also a classic example of what optimism means, of having belief and transferring into action. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, when thou hast made up your mind concerning a matter, put your trust in Allah. The Muslims made up their mind, they said, okay, the khandaq is a good tactic, put my trust in Allah, let's go full forth. Everybody on board. And, that's, and, and they did it, and it's a prime example for us of what optimism means. Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. I want to talk about one more thing, and that's the importance of balancing optimism and realism. Right? I, I know there's a lot of brothers and sisters who will say, you know, optimistic is great, but I got to tell you, I, I, you know, I'm a realist. You know, I, I, I'll be optimistic, but I'm also going to be real about it. And that's, that's not a terrible thing to say. There's, there's, well, there's wisdom in it. There's also a danger in it that you could say, you know, I'm just going to be real. I'm just going to be completely objective. And if we had a completely objective view of the Battle of Khandak, you would have said it's time for the Muslims to run. I mean, you can't. You, it's, it's, you're at number 10 to 1. It's time to run. So it's not about being completely 100% realistic. Be, be, be strategic. Weigh your options. Weigh what you have to do, but also know that, hey, you've got Allah on your side. And so when you, when you see something like people tell you, oh, you know, this country has the most resources of any country in the world, how can you hope to change all the homelessness and all the situations if this country can't do it on their own. Having that kind of idealism and almost a naivety, a, 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 a healthy naivety is healthy. But at the same time, it has to be balanced with realism. Why? Imam, Imam al-Baqir sallallahu alayhi excuse me. Have another salawat, peace. Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Imam al Baqir alayhi said, There is no believer who does not possess two lights in his heart. One is the light of fear, the other the light of hope. None of these is heavier than the other. Both are equal. This is, this is what I'm talking about when I, when I mean optimism and realism. Yes, we have optimism in Allah's mercy, but also, we also have fear of what may happen if we slip, of what can happen if we miss our prayers, if we forget to make up our fast from Ramadan, 
which by the way is rapidly approaching if you have fast to make up of, of what may happen if we don't pay attention during our salah we have a fear of this as much as we have a hope in Allah's mercy and why is it important to not be blindly optimistic because it'll lead to cynicism it'll lead to being jaded and this is my opinion but it's based on experience a lot of us we've been involved in activism in our youth or involved now and we see this this very dangerous trend that happens somebody comes in the community full of energy full of vigor they just want to get involved in anything oh you're doing a feeding I, I, I'll go oh you're having a, a, a lecture let me be the one to organize it or you're having an Islamic awareness week I want to be in charge of the table and it's wonderful and it's healthy then their second year they see well, wait we're doing the same thing we did last year shouldn't we doing, be doing something ten times better what, what, why didn't what we did pay off their, their optimism begins to become jaded a little bit and they say well, we, had a, we had a rally for our brothers and sisters in Iraq why is there still a war going on shouldn't our, shouldn't our work have paid off by now and then they begin, to, they begin to doubt their own abilities they begin to think well if it's not happening for me and if it's not happening for others it's just not worth trying this is, this is why optimism has to be balanced with the realism that hey we have a, a, a difficult challenge as Muslims of really trying to better this world and better our hearts uh, there's other brothers and sisters who say you know for this month I'm gonna pray Salat al-Layl every day I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this prayer and they do it for a week they do it for two weeks the third week they slip and then by the fourth week they're just like uh, uh, it, I tried it and it didn't work I'm just not gonna try it and then the next time they try to do it they just don't even bother because it's it, it wasn't balanced with a realism that hey this is a difficult thing that you're trying to do and if you slip that's okay if you make a mistake it's okay what's important is to persevere this is the, the, the another another challenge of over optimism is it can lead to rashness this is the, this is the lesson we learned from the battle of Khandak that not simply saying let me go out on that field and meet them but saying hey let me take a step back realize where I'm at and how can I better the position where I am brothers and sisters I, uh, that really is the brunt of my discussion I wanted to go back and recap what we talked about number one there's three kinds of there's three kinds of you can break down humanity into three levels and you can break it down into many levels but three levels that you you can do it is as huma humans as Muslims and as mu'mins inshallah we're all in that second level or striving to become at least that second level of Muslims but that's not enough brothers and sisters we have to be mu'min as well we have to strive to be in mu'mins and the way that we do that is through belief and action and brothers and sisters, one of the barriers to that action, to that belief, is pessimism. The belief that when a challenge afflicts you, that there's no point in going forward with it. And there's no point in, in, in striving towards the challenges in your life. And, if, and are looking always towards a negative. This is a dangerous thing. And it's balanced by optimism. And how did we define optimism? How did I define optimism, excuse me? I defined it as seeing a challenge and recognizing it but believing that Allah is with you at all times and persevering through it. Seeing a time when something may be difficult and saying, I recognize it's difficult, but I'm still going to take it on. And I'm going to try to do everything I can to make it better for myself. And we balance that optimism with a realism that there's going to be challenges. And if we don't succeed one day, that doesn't mean we can't try the next day. And that we always have to keep trying because perseverance is the foundation of optimism and it's the foundation of every mu'min inshallah salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad ya allah we ask that you make us all of those who are alladhina amanu in this world ya allah you have promised that there is relief with any hardship relieve us of the great difficulties and hardships imposed upon us Ya Allah, we ask that you allow us to, to follow the example of the great Fatima al Zahra as one of the greatest mu'mins in this world, Ya Rab. Ya Rab, we ask that you allow us to follow her example of when she was given the most 
difficult calamities in this world of seeing her father die, seeing her husband die. She kept persevering in this world, Ya Rab. We ask that you let us follow that example, Ya Rab. وصلى اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى أهل البيت هي الطيبين الطاهرين